In terms of polarity or the fourfold pattern, the emphasis here is that you are dealing with four units in a unity as opposed to two units as in a duality like I discussed before. I say this because quite often the word polarity is misused as duality. And as I said before, although they do have similarities, the differences between them are both striking and clear once you get a hold of the details. Now, going back to those seven hermetic principles, we'll take a look at the fourth of these principles. Where duality was being expressed within the law of correspondence, which is the second principle, the law of polarity, which is the fourth, is quite plain. Keep in mind, that were it not for correspondence or duality, which is two, there could be no polarity, which is four. Said differently, in the case of duality and polarity, the former gives rise to the latter. Continuing, as I have said with the example using the four elements, the latter two, earth and air, are born of the dynamics between the initial two, fire and water. From the relationship with fire and water, all that is created and viable is contained or expressed as air, the third element. While at the same time, not only the discarded residue of those differing dynamics, but the stage for the entire engagement make up earth, the fourth element. Similar to duality, polarity can be defined as the quality or state of having four different or opposite parts or elements. Aside from the four elements, which for the most part, I would rather save an in-depth explanation for when I do my segment on the Zodiac, there remains another pertinent example that I can rely on. That example is the concept of a tetrapolar magnet. When most would imagine a magnet, notably, there is known to be a north and a south pole of the magnet. Even if you cut that magnet in half, those halves will now possess a north and south of their own. This is quite commonly known. To examine further, however, the effect of this north and south pole on the magnet is the magnetic field that surrounds and is created by the magnet itself. This is a result of electron configurations and in magnetic materials, there is an upspin and a downspin to these electrons. I'll avoid the chemistry class for now, but I'll leave you with this here. The dynamics in the elements seen in a tetrapolar relationship is the essence of a polarity. Where the north defines the south and the relationship between the two gives rise to the east and the west, just like the upspin and the downspin of electrons resulting from the north and south poles of a magnet. The dynamics expressed by the tetrapolar magnet can be found throughout the symbolism of the occult, more especially here in the West. What we as occultists know as the four elements and the dynamics that they represent work together in the same manner as the poles of a tetrapolar magnet. This can even be seen with the elements being assigned associations with each of the cardinal points. Now, for those who have not yet thought about the philosophy behind these associations, I guarantee that there is much here to discover about the manner in which reality not only constructs itself, but interacts with itself. The same expression can be seen within the dynamic relationship between masculine and feminine alongside male and female. Even within Kabbalah, there is a teaching of the four worlds, or four trees of life, emanating out from the primordial Kalipoff and reconnecting at the kingdom, with Malkuth forming a square at the base. The Most High giving rise to the Most Low, if you will. In conclusion, and as I have expressed before, it is no coincidence that the fourth Hermetic Principle is polarity and not the second, or that Christ who is the third aspect of the Holy Trinity, and as such, creation itself, dies upon the earth, or the created, by way of the cross, which is a symbol for the fourfold pattern. That three, dying to four, only to rise as five. But we'll talk about the fivefold pattern in another segment.